Welcome back. One of Australia's biggest bikey gangs has taken over the rival group, telling members they will be shot if they continue to wear their colors. The rebels made the threat to members of the Satan soldiers as they took over their clubhouses in Bendigo, Victoria, early this month. A source told the Herald Sun the outfit was given only a week to clear out the premises. The rebels just walked into their house and said, Hey, out, it's ours now. If you don't leave, you and your family will be shot, the source says. Satan's soldiers previously linked to the Hells Angels are one of the lower profile gangs in the state with few publicized uh, incidences. A suspicious fire burned their clubhouse to the ground, which was only no man, that was bad. Base of their rival banditos aligned Diablos in 2013. The rebels are understood to have absorbed as much as $600,000 in assets in the massive takeover. The new assets only add to the outfit's 2,000 member and 70 chapter strong base, placing the gang as one of the largest in Australia. The latest push from the Rebels is understood to be an attempt to flex its muscles at rival Banditos increase their presence in the area. The Banditos are one of the biggest outfits in Australia with chapters across numerous states. The bikey gang has a history steeped in violence including the notorious 84 Milpera massacre in Sydney. A massive shootout between the Banditos and rival gang Comancheros led to the shooting death of a teenage girl and six bikey members. A total of 33 people were tried over the shooting and became one of the largest joint criminal trials in the history of NSW. That from Australia. By Jordan Febres, a former Hells Angel bikey has turned over a new leaf walking away from his old life and starting a fashion label. Ben Gapart admits he has lived and benefited from a life of crime, but wants to leave it behind and inspire other young people to do the same. Quote, We all done some bad things and I suppose it just follows us forever, Gapart told Nine News. The former enforcer has been one of the most prominent figures of the Gold Coast underworld over the past two years, involved in numerous street bras and public spats between rival gang members. He has also been prominent on social media boasting about his life of luxury to thousands of followers. Inst I guess that's a big thing, uh, Instagram. But he says there's no happy ending in it. Well, there's only two places you end up. That's in a jail or a grave. Gephardt insists he has left behind that life, revealing to Nine News he has started his own fashion label in an attempt to turn around his life. It's called, quote, BG Premium Apparel, a collaboration between Gephardt and one of his best mates, Forrest Gamble. Quote again, I'm just a face, I'm just the marketer, you know? Call me the Rolls Royce, Gephardt said. Gephardt said he had been wanting to launch the business for over two years in an effort to prevent young gangsters from a dangerous path he had walked before. It's been met with criticism from some of his former gang members. Yes, this is, when they're using gang, it ain't biker angle. It's just jealousy, mate. It's all jealousy. I don't talk about people like that the way they talk about me. I'm flattered by it, Gephardt said. Gephardt said he wasn't forced out of the club due to his popular online profile. Instead, he chose to leave due to decisions made by the club. Well, a lot of them are still my good mates. At the time, there was a personal things going down in the club internally. I just didn't agree 
with it at the time, he said. There were a lot of people in the club I didn't like. The bad blood certainly remains, though, as Gephardt's former home in Carrera was peppered with bullets up to 15 times over the past two weeks. I don't care. There's no bullets coming at me for now. I should be okay, he said. His focus is now on the future and improving life for those around him. This is the new Ben Gephardt, and I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere. For more information, check out BG Premium Apparel on Instagram. They use that a lot over in Oz. Ed Kamadi, Reno Gazette Journal, Las Vegas, and what authorities are calling a, quote, major investigative takedown 23 people tied to the Aryan Warriors, a violent white supremacist gang operating under orders trickling from leaders inside Nevada prisons, were indicted on more than 150 charges, including drug trafficking, racketeering, and murder. An indictment unsealed last week charges two men in the 2016 murder of Andrew Ryan Thurgood at High Desert State Prison in Indian Springs. Anthony Williams, known as Muggsy, and Tariq Gorasanin, known as Torque, now stand charged with murder and conspiring to kill Thorngood. Thorngood, 26, was stabbed during a fight with two other inmates in a facility day room. He had been serving 12 to 34 months at prison following a conviction on a felony charge of attempted possession of a stolen vehicle. Another pair of men, Devon Campbell, known as Soup, and Christopher Assoff, known as Bullwinkle, stand charged with the murders two men earlier this year. Lazardo Contreras Verdon, 24, was found shot to death on a Las Vegas road, and Thomas Patrick Glenn, 49, was stabbed to death in a backyard tent. Hmm. A prison to street trickle down. The Aryan Warriors are organized as a paramilitary group with operatives in both the prison system and Las Vegas community. Orders the street-based members to commit the crimes the syndicate is known for trickle to the outside from imprisoned leaders behind bars, according to authorities. Unlike other white supremacist groups that are focused on spreading their ideologies, the Aaron Warriors are focused on drug trafficking, racketeering, and murder. According to the indictment, the white supremacist gang uses violence to obtain greater access to the illegal controlled substance market, prevent members or others from cooperating with law enforcement, traffic and or sell controlled substances, Possess forgery laboratories, forge credit cards, forge currency in order to finance the Aryan Warriors or the white supremacist ideology. Organize, manage, and finance the Aryan Warriors criminal syndicate by instructing members to commit violence on behalf of the gang. At a press conference, Members of DEA Los Angeles and the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department discussed additional details about what authorities dubbed a, quote, major investigative takedown. The investigation began in February. Quote, the mission of the joint operation was to disrupt and dismantle the Aryan Warriors' Violent impact in the Las Vegas Valley, said John Leone, captain of the Gang Vice Bureau in the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. The gang, Leon said, had been actively involved in acts including murder, robbery, battery with a deadly weapon, assault with a deadly weapon, fraud, identity theft, drug trafficking, and selling narcotics between California and Las Vegas. This gang is responsible for some of the worst crimes that have occurred in our community, he goes on to say. 
There is a distinct link between the leadership and the street soldiers of the documented Aryan warriors and directed for profit violence. The takedown later led to the arrest of the Aryan warriors' main leadership and dismantling of the gang's drug distribution networks, Leon said. On August 17th, federal and local law enforcement teams executed seven search warrants and arrested 10 suspects with ties to the Aryan warriors. Authorities seized seven guns, two bulletproof vests, one stolen trailer, three stolen motorcycles, four dismantled fraud labs, and 9,700 in U.S. currency. Throughout the investigation, authorities seized or recovered more than 30 firearms, including rifles, shotguns, and handguns, many that were stolen. They also collected four pounds of meth, Leon said, and half a pound of heroin. Well, we have severely disrupted and dismantled the white supremacist criminal syndicate known as the Aryan Warriors, Leon said. Damn. Yeah, that's uh, the prison gang. That's prison life right there. So stay out of prison is what I say. Let's go on to some events here. Second annual Fallen Officer Ride honoring BOP Officer Jose Rivera. Officer Rivera was 22 years old. He was a four-year veteran of the Navy and completed two tours of active duty in Iraq. He began his career with the Federal Bureau of Prisons as a correctional officer on August 5, 2007, and less than one year later was killed in the line of duty. He is survived by his mother, two sisters, and brother. All proceeds will be going towards the Jose Rivera Memorial Park at USP Atwater, California. Please help us honor Jose Rivera and come out and ride with us. This is with the Punisher's MC 2nd Annual Fallen Officers Ride. And it starts uh, September 14th. Uh, let's see here. Time, arrive at 8.30. KSU at 9.30. 205 Harbor Boulevard, San Pedro, California. Ride starts at the Battleship, Iowa and ends at 520 West Willow Street, Long Beach, California. There will be a barbecue to follow the ride. Los Carneles, 12th Annual Biker Bash, October 26, 2019. 2 p.m. to 6 a.m. Come out and have a great time. No outside coolers. No attitudes. Hector Clubhouse, 3807 North Stanton Ave in Odessa, Texas. Must be 21 to enter the premises. Also, if you have an event that you would like on the biker angle, shoot it to info at insanethrottlebikernews.com and we will get it up there. Don't matter the event, don't matter the clubs, just don't matter, get the event out to us.